this week on Dave Radio Expenses. This was given to me by a gentleman, contacted me and said, you can have it, I've bought a new turntable. Okay, it works. I thought it would. I need to do something with this selenium rectifier. I'm going to replace it with silicon diodes. Just going to wrap it and we'll see what happens. This looks too thick actually. Then I realized I had a, an old Grundig set sitting there. The chassis looks better than I ever expected it to. G'day and welcome back. As we saw last week, the turntable was missing from the radiogram. And the gentleman that gave it to me said, there's no problem, it's in a box. Here it is. What he's given me here is an Audio Technica turntable. So that's going to go well. I'll have to put it inside. I guess I can just sit it on the legs. So let's have a look. Well, that's not an Audio Technica, that's a rusty old Grundig. Oh well, I'll have to see what I can do with this one. Alright, let's see what we've got. A uh, pile of books. Now this, oh look at that, instruction book. Ah oh, no, look, a circuit diagram. <laughs> You're kidding. Could have used that last week. Alright, I'll check that and see if I've done anything wrong with last week's effort. And and there's the uh, and there's the record change of manual. Yeah, good. Radiogram, serial number. Radiogram. Okay, I'll put those aside. Got a rubber mat. Oh, there's a rubber mat on there. A lead. Another rubber. Ooh. Hang on, we're finally getting to the platter, I think. There it is there. Well, it doesn't look too bad. There, that mat's got a crack in it. Oh, it's broken. Yeah. All right, I uh, won't be able to do much with that. There's a record hole filler. They're usually missing. There's the, there's the plug for the record player. Little gizmo. And the automatic... Um, whatever you call that. It the guy that gave it to me said it wouldn't work, it needs to be lubricated or something, so we'll have a look at that. There's the bottom of it, looks alright, it's um, reasonably clean, there's not a lot of rust on that. I just see some rust coming up here, hopefully that'll clean off, I won't have to repaint the top here. But it uh, looks pretty good so far. It's even got a cartridge in there uh, with a needle. So uh, that's a start. All right, I'll get it on the bench and we'll have a closer look. I've dusted off the old Rotogram 3000 and uh, it's all set up. All right, let's have a look around. So, uh, stop, start, manual, and that would be start. And it's got 16 to 78 on the speed selector. It's got a cartridge in here. That says LP, you probably can't see it from there. And this one says LPS. Long play special? I don't know. I'll have to find out what that means. Uh, start, yeah, okay. I'm not going to do much with it, I don't want to break anything. This one's obviously made for the Australian market, it's got a kangaroo there. I've just flipped it over, this is the bottom of course. I did quickly look at it before. Um, it's in good condition. There's grease all over it, but it's very, very hard. It's certainly dried out. Um, so I'm going to have to clean all this, obviously, and, and re-lubricate it. Now, looking at the design, I might be able to just take this all off and wash it uh, without dismantling it, which would be really good if I can do that. The guy that I got this off said it didn't work. Now, I don't know what that means. Um, I hope the motor's okay. So I think before I do anything, I'll just try and spin that. It's upside down. Probably shouldn't do it upside down, but we'll give it a go. Power cord to this has been removed. I think it goes on there. This is the switch, of course. And these wires go off to the motor, so it'll be in there, and that will switch the power onto the motor. So I'm going to try the motor first. And I'm just going to use some clip leads. This is extremely safe. Yeah, I'm all set up. I'll put some power on. We'll just see if that rotor spins. Yep. 
Good. Okay, that's one thing out of the way. So this should be a really straightforward repair. I've just got to clean it all up, lubricate it, and hopefully it'll all work properly. There's a C-clip there. I'll take that off. I'll just get this platter off. We'll see what's going on under there. But I've had trouble getting this out. I had to turn it upside down a bit to get it to start. Now I can't, still can't, there it goes. Uh, the rubber mat, of course, would have been soft. You would have lifted it up and then just, there'll be holes, well, yeah, there'll be holes there so you could grab it. Yeah, that's interesting. It's got a rubber idler wheel on it. I would have thought they were out of date by the time they built this. Now it's got some, it's got some bearing thing going on here. Oh, it hasn't got any bearings. Now that originally would have had some steel balls in there, three of them, uh, unless it ran on the plastic. Uh, I'll find out. Now I pulled this apart last night, this morning. I went and got some uh, 1 8 uh, steel balls to replace the ones that are missing from here. I also found out that that was, that was on the bottom there already. That goes on top, then this one goes on top of that. It's a very cheap setup, but that's how it works. Then the turntable platter goes on top and then the e-clip. Now somebody messed it up, lost the balls out of here and put this on top of the platter, so it was a complete mess. Anyway, I've sorted that out. Now I can see four screws here, that will drop this whole mechanism out. There's probably other stuff underneath I need to disconnect, but then I can work on it on the bench. Another thing I noticed is this gear's got a crack in it. I thought it was a machine mark, but it's not. Uh, it's cracked, so I need to reinforce that. I've ordered a new cartridge, that's coming tomorrow. Uh, this one, the needle's been worn to the nub. There's nothing left of it. Now to flip it over. I've looked at this a bit closer. I'm not going to take it out. I've hummed and hard both ways, but it's too much stuff to take off. And I don't really think it needs to. It's a pretty simple uh, mechanism underneath here. So I can get in there and clean off all that old grease and re-grease it. I don't think that'll be a problem. I do want to remove the motor. There's only three nuts holding that on. I think that'll come out. So I'll desolder it from here and just take this lead out and take the whole electrical part out. So I'll just unsolder these motor um, connections to the switch. Oops. I'm going to undo these three nuts. This would have been adjusted to a certain tension. The motor will balance on those springs when the turntable's up the right way. If the motor was hanging the right way, there'd be a gap. And I would think you would probably just set that gap to a nominal size, maybe one and a half mil, two mil or something. As long as it was even, it probably wouldn't matter. It's just got to take the spring. I'll undo these nuts. I do have access to a service manual on this um, record player, so uh, that will tell me what that's supposed to be. The motor spins pretty good. I, I thought it was a bit tighter than that. Anyway, uh, it's got uh, little caps on the ends where the bearings are and they've got slots. So I guess they've got um, felt in there. You can just top them up with oil and let them soak for a while and the, that'll re-energize the bearings. Uh, I want to have a look at this gear. I want to get the repair underway so I can let the adhesives dry. That gear's definitely cracked and it's gone all the way through. I'll repair the crack with super glue and I'll cut out an aluminium ring or washer if you like and glue it in with JB Weld and that should hold it. Uh, it'd be nice to be able to put it on the bottom but I can't because it'll hit this little lever here on the other gear so I can't do that but the top one should be enough. I was able to get this cover off that just clips on. Uh, this rust area here or whatever it is I need to be able to get that off. So what I thought I might do is just I'll go and get some cleaner and just see if that'll clean up. Uh, I've got some kitchen cleaner here we'll see if that works. Oh, it's just wiping off. <laughs> I think it might be um, bug dirt. Oh, I'm not sure what it is. I've got a bit of cream cleanser here. We'll see what that does. There's a bit there that's not coming off. This is slightly abrasive. Yeah, that's got most of that off. So this will be okay. This will clean up all right. I'll take this out to my workshop now and I'll start cleaning it up. I found a washer and it fits perfectly in the gear. So I'm just roughing it up. I'll rough up the plastic as well and a bit of JB Weld and this will be as good as new. 
I've put some JB Weld on the washer, so I've just got to drop that on the top. There we go. That's gone in well, and I'll just clean up that excess adhesive around the edge, a bit inside there. Uh, but that's a good fix. I think that'll be all right. I've got some wax and grease remover here, and it appears to be taking off the old grease pretty well. All right, that's come up. That's coming up really well. So I'll blow that out with some compressed air and get rid of the surplus and wipe it out with a rag and some uh, cotton buds and whatever else I need and get it all cleaned up. I think this will come up okay. I've cleaned all the mechanical and it's come up really nice. I've got to go through and just finalise it, as I said, with some Q-tips or whatever I need to get into the finer points. Uh, there's some rust in here that needs to be treated, so I'll do that and then re-protect it. At the moment, I'm just going to clean up all this top area here. The top's come up great, I'm happy with that. All this area cleaned up nicely. Yeah, the arm, tone arm had, I think they're fly spots or something. Got rid of all that and uh, yeah, looking good. So I'm going to just put some uh, rust killer on these rusty spots in here. Uh, put some primer on a bit later and then I'll put some sort of top coat on that kind of matches. I haven't got anything that exactly matches, but I'll have something there. That rust was worse than I thought, so I sanded it off, retreated it. Uh, then I've put some uh, Kill Rust uh, Heavy Duty Primer on it, and I'm just going to put a top coat on it. It's just in a rattle can, and it's uh, it's not the right colour, it's all I've got. Now, the main thing is to stop the rust and stop it coming up the sides and affecting the top of the deck. That's going to need a couple more coats, but uh, I think it'll be all right. I'll take the tape off later. We'll have a look. I'll see how this came out. Let's take the tape off. You wouldn't write home to mum about it, but it's stopped the rust, and that's all I was concerned with. This is hidden once the plate is in, so you can't see it. As I said before, I want to try and get some oil into these motor bearings. There's one there and one there. They've got little slots in them. I'm hoping they're full of um, felt and it will absorb the oil, but I don't know. So I'll put a couple in the top there and just see if they come out the bottom. And it's not going in. It's going around it. All right. Now I've got a, a syringe here. I think these are insulin syringes. It's going in one tiny drip at a time. According to the needle here, I've put 45 units in, whatever the units are in. I guess they're mil, aren't they? 10, 1, 2, I don't know. That took the whole, that took the whole syringe full. It's just starting to drip out now. I've filled the syringe again, but that's just overflowing now, so that's full of oil. I'll let that soak for a while. I've got to do the other bearing, of course, uh, but I reckon that'll be okay. I reckon that'll do the job. I oiled the uh, top bearing here. That took a lot of oil as well. So I filled both of them up to overflowing. I'll just let them sit for a while. Then I'll invert the motor and see if any drains out. So I don't, I don't want it draining out over time. Um, but the motor actually spins much better than it did. So uh, it's done something, I think. That soaked for about 12 hours and then I flipped it over for about two hours. Um, that's dry. I wiped it off and it hasn't gained anything. So there is an absorbent pad in there. So that motor is good for another, I don't know, 60 years. All right, I'm ready to mount the motor back in. Uh, then the spring goes on. And then there's this little adjusting cap. Second spring. Adjusting cap, there we go, and there is an adjustment for this. I did download the manual now. I did have it the other day, but I hadn't downloaded it and printed it. And there's the third one on. When the turntable's the right way up, this motor will sit on these springs. So what they say is, make that gap between this plate and this plate 6mm. So I've got a bit of 6mm uh, round stock here, and I'll put that in there. So I'll spin the motor over and adjust these caps until that will 
just be a friction fit. The turntable's the right way up now. There's the motor, and they say you should be able to get that in there. Just a matter of adjusting that until you get some sort of... There it goes. Here's the second one, and that's too high as well, so... A bit hard to get to this one. It's just depressing it. Okay. I'll do the third one off camera, it'll be a bit easier for me. And then I'll have to go back and check them all again, because uh, each one's going to slightly affect the other one. So it'll take a bit of to and fro to get these right. I flipped it back over again, it went very well. Uh, I was able to get the little spacer in there and uh, get, it, get them all exactly the same. Very easy. These lock nuts go on now and they just lock that spring cap in position. There you go. Done. Same deal with this one, just lock it. Alright, that won't move now. I need to re-lubricate this. I've got some white lithium grease here. Um, I've seen people use it on turntables. I don't know if that's the recommended grease. The instructions I've got list about five different greases. I'm not going to go and buy five greases, so that's not going to happen. So this is going to have to do... Now pivots like this, I'll just put some light oil in them. So I'll let that soak for a while. So leave it with me, I'll do all these little greasy things and um, I'll come back when I'm finished. I think I've greased everything, I'll just flip it over now, I'll do the top side. Much the same again, a couple of things to lubricate here, some pivots. Uh, once again I'll just use some oil and I'll top it with grease so it's got a supply of oil in the future. Uh, this idler wheel or gear has got to go back on. I think I've greased everything on the top. This little bearing has to go on here without the little bearings falling out. And I've used a light bearing grease on those ball. And then this thin washer which acts as the top bearing surface. That goes on top of that and the turntable will go on top of that. I've still got to put my repaired gear back on here. There you go. Okay, clips on. I'm going to connect power to this turntable, but before I do, I had a thought somewhere that I'd seen this motor runs on 110 or 20 volts, even though the gramophone runs on 240 or 230. I've got the schematic here for setting this up on different voltages, and I would say, sure enough, this is wired for 110 volts. So it's just as well I didn't put 240 volts in it, it would have um, burnt this out in no time. I've got the voltage set to 110 volts, so I'll put some power on it. Uh, I've got it on 33. I don't know what's going to happen. I've just got it on manual at the moment. I'll get that to work first. So if I push that... Ooh. Oh, that doesn't work, does it? Now, I wouldn't have thought that would have gone up on manual. Maybe it's out of sync. Try again. Well, it's still going through the motions. Hmm. I wonder if that lever is supposed to be up there. Alright, I'll try it again with the lever up there. See, I wouldn't think it would go. That should just sit there. Should just start the record. Oh, where's it going? Yeah, so I can't lower it because it's... Oh, now it's coming back. <laughs> wow, i got to fix that slipping... Uh, of course I won't. Yes, it's going to keep going because the lever's up. Before I do too much, I'll try and get the uh, turntable to work properly. I cleaned up the little rubber idler wheel and I've cleaned up the inside of the rim here. So I'll see if that's made any difference. So I'll just go to manual again, um, just to make sure that's working. That seems better. Yeah. Alright, that's okay. And I'll put the uh, stacker in. And I'll put a LP on, a 133. We'll see if that works. Yikes. <laughs> that looks like it's working. Oh. oh, it might have triggered itself then. Uh, when it lowered the needle, it skidded it across. I'm not sure if that was going to affect the auto return. 
I'm going to try it again. This time I'll stop the tone arm from moving across when it goes down to hit the record or sit on the record if I can. Oops. Nope, still doing it. All right, there's something wrong with the mechanism. I'll have to suss that out. Uh, now, something that's worried me since I saw this, this spring is on this leg here and I don't think it's right. I don't think that's what it's supposed to be. So if I move the tone arm here, kind of, it catches up. It can't be right. Maybe that's why the tone arm is springing, trying to, yes, because that would push it back. I don't know. So just sit there like that. That would make more sense. That's still going to have the same problem. So when it's there, it's still going to try and push the arm across. It shows it in the drawing, but it doesn't show where it connects to, so I'm not sure where it goes. I'll stick it on that side. That's going to go past. Yeah, like that. I'll put it there. I'll see what it does. Okay, I've loaded the record back in. I'll just push start again. We'll see what happens this time. Now, all I expect will happen, it won't spring across. I'm hoping. Yeah, that's it. Okay. But it's still got the problem where it won't keep playing, obviously. I've taken the platter off and I'm going to simulate the um, platter rotating by operating this gear. When the stylus is on the record and it's supposed to be playing, this gear should move out of the way. And I don't think it's doing that. Uh, the platter goes that way. So this bloke, what is that oh dear, gear? this bloke oh, carries on for about an hour with this. But due to the extreme violence and language, I'm going to cut to where he finally gets lucky. Pushing that up. I'm just gonna, I haven't tried this yet, but I've just found something. This is the kicker, and when the turntable turns, it hits this, and it will disengage that gear and move it in to engage with the gear that's on the platter or the turntable. So if I push on that, that now engages. Now that couldn't move, it was frozen. This is the other end of the kicker, and it had this rod stuck in that hole. And that rod is actuated when you push the start button. So if I push the start button, you can see it's trying to move it. It's a mile too short, that rod, to go in that hole. So this was stuck, it was jammed, it wouldn't move from here. That rod was pulling at it all the time. So I took the rod out, which was pretty easy, and we'll see what it does, but I, I, don't, I don't know if that's... Something's not right. So now if I push start, the rod pushes on the kicker, then the kicker moves over here, and that has, oh no, the kicker will move that up. There we go. And start driving the, the gears. So now the gear starts pushing that up. And the kicker can still move in. I wonder if it should have a spring, I don't know. Now that is not engaged now, that's out. It's locked out. So that's where it should be. Now the manual is very vague on this thing. It doesn't show the, the rod going in there. Anyway, I'm going to put this on. I'll see if it works. I'll put the record on. It's all set. The power's on. If I push that, see what happens. Come on. All right, we'll try again. Now, it may have been in the wrong mode. There it goes. Beautiful. It's actually playing something. <laughs> so if I push stop now... There it goes. So 
So that's the problem. I'm not sure if I've fixed it or just sort of got around the problem by taking it off. I'll have to do some more investigation and work out what actually that rod is supposed to do or where it's supposed to go. Just for a bit of fun, I'll put the RPM meter on it. Um, should be able to do that and put it on a manual, I guess. Now, I did this on the 78 RPM uh, phonograph I had last week. And I got a few uh, comments saying, you know, it's going to sl slow it down and give you a false reading. I, I don't think so. That uh, apparently... All right. All right, 33.36. Apparently, um, they tested it. You needed 13 to 25 ounces to slow it down on one RPM. So my 150 gram little uh, rig here was not going to make any difference to it. So that's coming out of 33.36, well of 0.26%. So yeah, that's working really well. Okay, um, like I said, I'll just do a bit more uh, investigation on that rod. Work out where it's supposed to go. And uh, I think we're on track for this one. I found this drawing here. That's the kicker arm. There's the kicker on the that's actually on the turntable part. It comes around, hits the little uh, plastic block here, pushes this arm back, and that trips the gear so it re-engages with the turntable. Here's the little rod that I've got floating, and that's exactly how they've drawn it. There's the end of the rod. It's got a little circle on it, and it's just pushing against that uh, beam there. So uh, the way I've got it is exactly correct. So whoever put it in the hole, someone's put it in the hole. Someone's been in here and played around with this. And I approached it as just being a gram that had worked for years, slowly stopped working. And I, all I had to do was repair it and put some grease in it and off it would go. But someone's been in here. That was never, that shouldn't have been in that hole. And that other spring should not have been in that little uh, cutout or little uh, metal finger or whatever it was. I'm pretty happy now. I was getting a bit depressed before. It took me a while to work all this out. Uh, I didn't film it because it's just been me sitting there scratching my head for an hour. There's a few things I need to clear up with the cartridge I was talking about earlier in the video. The new ones arrived this morning, but I haven't been using that. I'll put that away till I'm ready to do a full test. Earlier in the video, I said this had LPS on one side and LP on the other. Well, it's not. You just can't see the S when the cartridge is over like that. So I thought it said LP. Uh, this apparently means long play stereo. Anyway, I thought I'd just clear that up. I, I do learn things as I go along. I've been using this cartridge along with an old scratch record for testing, so don't be concerned if I've been rough on anything. Uh, this one's going in the bin, and the record's no value anyway. I'm going to take this off, and I'll change the pad. This rubber is so hard, it'll just crack off. There's a plastic centerpiece here, and that's moulded on. You can't get that off. So that stays there. Uh, originally, this rubber would have been so flexible, you could just um, stretch it in and out, but not anymore. So I'll just break it off. When I opened the box that the record player had been transported in, it had some mats sitting on the top. Uh, there's a couple of rubber ones. And this felt one. Now, I think the felt one's going to suit me better. The rubber ones are just not quite the right size. If I cut them, I'm sort of cutting halfway through some rings and things. So I'm going to try the felt one first. I do have spares of these type. I bought them uh, a while ago as spare parts. So the thing to do is to cut it big enough, and I assume it's going to fit under this plastic ring. Just. I'll use the old mat to get the diameter here, and then I'll cut the same hole out on the felt ring. I put a bit of the broken plastic back in here, and that's going to be about... Uh, it's about that. It's about 46 mil. I have my hole cutter set up here, and this is an American uh, hole cutter, so it's in inches. Uh, 1 and 13 sixteenths equals the 45 millimeters I said. So I'll see if it'll, this will cut it. I'm not sure it will. It's doing something. Let's see what it's done. Uh, not much. All right. I'll go around with a knife. I can at least follow that cut and uh, I'll clean that out. All right, I've cut that circle out. Now, the thing is to try and get it under here, and I'm not sure how easy that's going to be. Uh, so I'm going to use a ruler to try and get it to go under there. I'm not sure if it's going to work. Uh. 
Well, that's gone in. Okay, that's good. Excellent. I've flipped the turntable over and I've just got it on the carousel here. Now my intention is to hold the knife here and spin this and cut the excess off. That doesn't look too bad. Uh, there's some bits of fluff hanging off the edges there. I'll just go around with some scissors and trim that off. Uh, but that'll do. Also put a bit of double sided tape in there, or double stick tape, uh, just to hold the mat. It sometimes might try and curl up a bit. Other times it will slip, so that'll just hold it. All right, I'll pop that back on there. Drop more oil in there. It's pretty well oiled, but I'll just put a bit more in. Okay. I gotta say, for a cheap set, this turntable spins very freely. Oops. Alright, so clip on. There's two covers to put over the mechanism here. Uh, this little cover goes over the arm. This had a crack all the way through it, so I've repaired that. It came up pretty good. That sits there. Uh, this guy has to go on as well. That one just clips in. I should have put that on first. There we go. That's all I'm going to do to this record player at the moment. I'm going to wait for a full demo when I get it back in the cabinet. I was confused originally about the manual operation of this player, so I haven't actually tried it since uh, I, it didn't work the first time, but I'll just see what it does this time. All right, so I'll put it to manual. Now, I would think the record will start spinning and nothing else will happen. That's exactly what goes on. So then you position the stylus over the record. And there it goes. So that'll play until it finishes the, the record gets over here. We'll do the bump and then it'll come back. That resets. There we go. So that's how I thought it would work and that's how it does work. I'd like to see what the weight of the needle is on the surface of the record. I've got my little scales here and I've got the little test weight here or the little calibration weight. Uh, so I've take that off and it should read minus five. These scales only go to five and the uh, recommended weight on this is four to six. So we should read the five there it is. So it's 5.3. So uh, what we want four to six, perfect, it's right in the middle. There's no adjustment uh, for it, but uh, I thought I'd just weigh it. I've weighed it with the new cartridge on, no point weighing it with the old one. I'm very happy with the way this is working and it's working perfectly now. I had a bit of trouble in the middle of the video there trying to get it to work, but uh, got through there eventually. Unfortunately, I'm gonna to have to end the video here the cabinet's got more work in it than I thought it did, and it's just taking too long. So if I break the video now, it just takes a bit of pressure off me to try and get the cabinet finished in a few days, and I can take my time and enjoy it. This will be part two in part three, the cabinet. Uh, the radio still has a few things I need to do to tidy it up, and there's a couple of things to do on this record player that I haven't done yet. Anyway, I'll just put this record on. I've got my little computer speakers connected up here. They're not very good, but uh, they'll give us some indication of it working. And then I'll see you next week for my next radio adventure. Laura and Tommy were lovers. He wanted to give her everything.